were baling in the middle of the day making dairy quality hay. That probably changed our mind more than anything about the, the steamer. I'm Howard Bracken. I uh, probably consider myself as the farm manager at Bracken Farms. I'm Kirby Bracken. I'm Howard's boy. I uh, help operate and run the farm with him. Uh, and I take care of the steamers and run the steamers. The uh, farm is located in the southwest corner of Utah in Iron County. Uh, we grow alfalfa hay, approximately 2,000 acres. Bracken Farms began uh, in 1943. I think my father and my grandfather uh, purchased a piece of property up there, probably south and west of where our farm shop is now. Uh, it was uh, brush ground and sandy ground, sand dunes. And they uh, brushed that with a SC tractor with a scraper on the back, leveled it and started from there and uh, as time went on we had an opportunity to buy property from neighbors and we just expanded from that. When I started as a kid I just remember uh, jumping potato rows with my dad moving sprinklers and uh, just following him around riding in tractors. Uh, since then we have moved our operation from wheel lines to all center pivots and have kind of significantly advanced into more technical farming rather than the old hard labor that he and my grandpa grew up doing. So now we're probably well into the current or future of farming. The climate ranges from uh, 95 degrees to 100 degrees in June. It's also uh, windy, so hot, dry, and windy in June. And then uh, into July, August, September, it uh, turns into a monsoonal flow where it's a little more humid and it's also upwards of 100 degrees through those months. In the past with our uh, hot, dry weather, when uh, the challenges that we have had in making hay has been getting the hay too dry, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when it was too dry, it was a disaster for us. And the way we would take care of it is kind of hold off on waiting for it to get dry and would try and capture some stem moisture. We'd run that through the balers and in the beginning, all we bailed with was small balers. Small balers, they can absorb a little bit more stem moisture and take that uh, moisture and and leach it out as it cures and when we moved to big balers it significantly changed because the big balers pack the hay tighter and the risk of fire is a lot more than with the small balers so we had to change our operation to where we would try and wait for it to get drier and if we miss that point this is where his his solution came into play we, uh, at that time, we was running two big balers, and we had a water truck, and we decided we wanted to try and apply some water onto that hay to make it pack up when you're baling hay. And then eventually we got two more balers, so we got, had to buy another water truck. So we ran two water trucks in front of four balers to, to put up hay, and it, it worked in a fashion. It, didn't, it wasn't the best, but when you're bone dry and you gotta have a little something to put it together, why, that's what we had. That was our only option. We uh, started looking at the Staley West steamer uh, mostly because of the 72 hour challenge. It was uh, something when Staley West came over to do that challenge, we were able to see uh, the capabilities of the steamer, what it could do during the day, and it was straight up June weather. It was hot, dry, and windy, and uh, they were baling in the middle of the day making dairy quality hay. That, that was the, the point that tipped the scale for us or for me, is watching that 
bale all day long and all night long and the stuff that they baled in the middle of the day was pretty darn nice hay and it made us think that there's a time we could bale hay in the in the middle of the day if we had to it would work and it, that was the tipping point that, that probably changed our mind more than anything about the, the steamer. <laughs>